The Governance of China, Volume 2, Audiobook, Part 16, Socialist Democracy. Confidence in the Political System of Chinese Socialism, September 5, 2014. Part of the speech at the meeting marking the 60th anniversary of the National People's Congress. People's democracy is a banner that the CPC has always held high. On our way forward, we should keep to the socialist path of making democratic political progress with Chinese features. The way we plan and accelerate China's socialist democracy plays a decisive comprehensive, and far-reaching role in our national political life. At all times, and almost everywhere on the planet, evidence can be found showing that the wrong choice in the path for political development leads to social unrest, national disruption, and the fall of the government. China is a large developing country, Choosing the right path for its political progress is therefore a fundamental and vital issue. Designing and developing the national political system, we must ensure the unity of history and reality, theory and practice, and form and content. We must take into account the realities and the prevailing conditions in China, focusing on current issues to respond to actual demands rather than copying from other models. We must keep to the long-established track of historical heritage, cherishing the path of past development, accumulated political experience, and established political principles, rather than breaking with history. A political system works to adjust political relations, establish political order, accelerate national development, and maintain national stability. This is why it cannot be judged without reference to its specific social and political conditions. It can never be all in the same key and follow the same pattern. In our political system, we should not simply imitate others when we see things that we do not have, and neither should we want to get rid of what we believe to be surplus because others do not have it. Neither of these views is correct because they are superficial and reductive. As an old Chinese saying goes, to the south of the Waihe River grow oranges, while to the north grow bitter oranges. Footnote 1. Annals of Master Yan. Yan Zi Chun Chiu. End of footnote 1. The purpose of the saying is to highlight the influence of environment. We should draw on the achievements of other political civilizations, but we should never let them outweigh the foundations of China's own political system. China is a country with a land area of over 9.6 million square kilometers and a population of 56 ethnic groups. Whose model should we copy and who is qualified to throw their weight around and tell us what to do? Living in a colorful world, we should uphold the approach of inclusiveness, modestly learn from the best of other civilizations, and digest and absorb them on an independent basis, so as to turn them into part of the best of our own. Never follow others without trying to understand them properly. In, an, in attempting to walk like a swan, the crow loses its own gait. Blindly copying the political systems of other countries will never work in China. They will never adapt to our country. Such a course of action will turn the tiger you are trying to draw into a dog. It could even spell an end to the independent destiny of our country. Only a system deeply rooted and fully nourished in our own soil is trustworthy and will serve our purposes. No two political systems on earth 
are exactly alike, and no model can fit the political systems of all countries. The Chinese people recognize that it is natural for things to be different. All countries differ in their realities. Each country is unique in its political system, which is determined by its people and has been developed and gradually refined over a long period of time on the basis of their historical heritage, cultural traditions, and social and economic development. The strength of China's socialist political system featuring Chinese characteristics, workable, full of vigor and vitality, and efficient, is that past and present it has grown on the Chinese soil. In the future, it will continue to thrive and to be deeply rooted in this soil. The best way to evaluate whether a country's political system is democratic and efficient is to observe whether the succession of its leading body is orderly and in line with the law, whether all people can manage state affairs and social, economic, and cultural affairs in conformity with legal provisions, whether the public can express their requirements without hindrance, whether all sectors can efficiently participate in the country's political affairs, whether national decisions can be made in a rational, democratic way, whether professionals in all fields can be part of the team of the national leadership and administrative systems through fair competition, whether the ruling party can serve as a leader in state affairs in accordance with the Constitution and laws, and whether the exercise of power can be kept under effective restraint and supervision. Thanks to a long-term effort, we have made decisive progress in addressing such major issues. We have replaced the lifelong tenure of officials with limited terms. Today, all officials serving in government agencies are replaced in an orderly manner. We have offered greater opportunities for the people to participate in political affairs so that they are able to play their role as the masters of the country on a wide range at all levels. We have promoted the broadest possible patriotic united front and developed a unique socialist consultative democracy which has brought together the wisdom and strength of all political parties, organizations, ethnic groups, social groups, and people from all walks of life. We have striven to establish a decision-making system that tells us how people are faring, reflects public opinion, pools, general wisdom, and values social strengths. We have also maximized the transparency of decision-making and provided further opportunities for the public to take part in the process, so as to ensure that all of our decisions serve the interests and aspirations of the people. We have established and improved a system for the selection and appointment of exemplary talent, so that outstanding people from all sectors can be drawn to the causes of both the party and the government. We have promoted the rule of law, law-based governance, and exercise of state power, and a law-based country, government, and society, thus enhancing governance by law throughout the country. We have established and refined a multi-level system for scrutiny and one for open administration system in various areas so as to guarantee that both party and central government organs, as well as their staff, exercise their power in accordance with proper authorization and procedures. China has implemented the state system, which is a socialist state, under the People's Democratic Dictatorship, led by the working class and based on the alliance of workers and farmers. The system of people's congresses as the system of government, the system of multi-party cooperation and political consultation under the leadership of the CPC, the system of regional ethnic autonomy, and the system of community-level self-governance, featuring distinctive Chinese characteristics. This institutional arrangement has demonstrated the following strengths. It performs well in allowing the people to enjoy more extensive and more substantial rights and freedoms and share more opportunities to participate in national and social governance. 
It can effectively regulate the country's political relations, promote a vigorous and vital relationship among political parties, ethnic groups, religions, and social groups, and compatriots at home and abroad, enhance national cohesion, and form political stability. It can pool our resources to accomplish sizable tasks, successfully accelerate the liberation and development of social productivity, incentivize all sectors during socialist modernization, and upgrade quality of life and standards of living. It can effectively safeguard state independence, sovereignty, security, and the benefits of development, and maintain the well-being of both the nation and its people. Over the three decades since the introduction of the reform and opening up policy, China has overcome rarely seen difficulties and removed barriers to progress. As a result, it has reached new heights in economic strength and overall national strength and in people's standard of living. All ethnic groups have worked together for common prosperity and development, leading to a long-term social harmony and stability in the country. Facts prove that China's socialist democracy is bestowed with enormous vitality, and the country has made the right choice for its socialist path of making political progress with Chinese characteristics, which suits China's national conditions and reinforces the position of the people as the master of the country. A country's political system defines and responds to its economic and social foundations. It can even play a decisive role. It is a key link between other systems. Therefore, we must increase self-confidence in our country's political system and strengthen our faith in and determination to follow our chosen political path of development. Socialist democracy with Chinese characteristics is something new and good. This does not necessarily mean that China's political system is flawless, beyond improvement, and incapable of development. Having confidence in our political system does not mean being smug or complacent, nor does it mean we know best and we can ignore the outside world. Instead, we should fuse growing confidence in the system with continuous reform and innovation, and be unstinting in our efforts to improve and develop the institutional system while maintaining the fundamental political system. As we have always believed, the progress of our democracy and legal system is not quick enough in responding to the requirements of expanding people's democracy and promoting social and economic development. When it comes to socialist democracy, there remain further improvements to be made in its system, mechanisms, procedures, regulations, and specific operations. We should therefore double our efforts to safeguard the people's right to democracy and give full play to their creativity. While promoting reform in all respects, we should actively and steadily advance political reform, take the people's position as master of the country as a fundamental principle, enhance the vitality of the party and the country, and keep the people fully motivated. Socialist political progress means modernizing the state governance system and capacity. The general goal of continuing reform set at the third plenary session of the 18th CPC Central Committee concluded with two phrases, improving and developing the socialist system with Chinese characteristics and modernizing our national governance system and capacity. The former defines our fundamental orientation, Chinese socialism, rather than anything else. The latter points the distinctive direction to achieve development and progress under the fundamental orientation. Each of the two is essential, and they are interdependent. 
The key to socialist democracy lies in maximizing and expanding our strengths and traits. We should give better play to the party's core function as a leader that commands the overall situation and coordinates with all other stakeholders. We should improve the CPC's capability for scientific, democratic, and law-based governance, ensure that the party leads the people to govern the country effectively, guarantee that our country moves forward with the leadership in a state of unity, we must uphold the principle that all power of the state belongs to the people, which guarantees not only democratic elections in accordance with the law, but also democratic decision-making, democratic management, and democratic supervision, and avoids any risk that pre-election promises will not be kept. We must uphold and improve the system of CPC-led multi-party cooperation and political consultation, and intensify cooperation and coordination between all social forces so as to avoid conflicts, disputes, and internal strife among the various parties involved. We must uphold and improve the system of regional ethnic autonomy, consolidate ethnic relations of equality, unity, mutual assistance, and harmony, and achieve harmonious development of all ethnic groups so as to guard against ethnic conflicts and misunderstandings. We must uphold and improve the system of community-level self-governance by improving local democracy and see that the people directly exercise their democratic rights in line with the law and that their rights are genuine. We must uphold and improve the system and principle of democratic centralism by enhancing the capacity and efficiency of all governance, government agencies, stepping up their coordination and collaboration, and forming a strong force for managing our state affairs so as to avoid internal friction. In short, we should double our efforts in institutionalizing and standardizing socialist democracy to give free reign to the strengths of the socialist political system with Chinese characteristics so that our party and nation can thrive and enjoy long-lasting stability. Broad, multi-level, and institutionalized Consultative Democracy, September 21st, 2014, part of the speech at the meeting marking the 65th anniversary of the CPPCC. Consultative democracy is a unique form and a distinctive strength of socialism with Chinese characteristics. It is an important embodiment of the party's mass line. It was stated at the 18th National Congress of the CPC that as China's socialist democracy progresses, we need to improve the institutions and mechanisms for consultative democracy and promote its broad-based, multi-level, and institutionalized development. It was emphasized at the third plenary session of the 18th CPC Central Committee that with a focus on the major issues concerning economic and social development and the practical issues that affect people's immediate interests, the party should lead extensive consultations throughout the whole of society and ensure that they take place both before decisions are made and during their implementation. These important statements and plans have shown what the way forward will be for China's socialist consultative democracy. We should have a full understanding of the nature of socialist consultative democracy. The very purpose of the CPC's leadership in developing people's democracy is to guarantee and support the position of the people as masters of the country. This is not simply a slogan or a few hollow words. We must ensure its place in the country's political and social activities and guarantee the people's right to effectively manage state affairs, economic and cultural undertakings, and social affairs in accordance with the law. 
A name is not granted by heaven. It must be earned in life. Footnote 1, Wang Fu Zhu, Records of Thinking and Questioning. Si Wen Lu, Wang Fu Zhu, 1619-1692, was a thinker and philosopher in the late Ming and early Qing dynasties. End of footnote 1. There are many diverse ways to realize democracy, so we must not be confined just to one particular rigid one. Further, there is no such thing as one single set of standard criteria that are universally acceptable. Whether people enjoy democratic rights or not depends on whether they have the right to vote in elections, as well as whether they have the right to constantly participate in everyday political activities. Apart from having the right to democratic elections, it also depends on whether they have the right to democratic decision-making, democratic management, and democratic supervision. Socialist democracy requires not just a complete set of institutions and procedures, but also full participation. The position of the people as masters of the country must be manifested in the concrete and practical exercise of state power by the CPC and its governance of the country. In all aspects of the work of the party and the, and the government organizations, at all levels, and through the realization and development of the people's own interests. Putting people's democracy into practice and ensuring the people's position as masters of the country demands that we initiate extensive discussions throughout the whole of society while governing the country. Mao Zedong once said, The relations between all aspects of the state need deliberations. Footnote 2, Mao Zedong on the nature and tasks of the CPPCC Collected Works of Mao Zedong, Volume 6, Chinese Edition, People's Publishing House, Beijing, 1999, page 386, end of footnote 2. You are all familiar with the nature of our government to do things through consultations with the people. We may call it consultative government. Footnote 3, Ibid, Talks with People from the Business Circles, Volume 7, Page 178, end of footnote 3. Zhou Enlai once said, The spirit of deliberation of the new democratic revolution is not in the final voting. It is mainly in the deliberations and repeated discussions that happen before a decision is made. Footnote 4, Zhou Enlai, Issues on the CPPCC, Selected Works of Zhou Enlai on the United Front, Chinese edition, People's Publishing House, Beijing, 1984, page 134, end of footnote 4. Under China's socialist system, whenever a problem cro crops up, we should resort to deliberations first. Matters involving many people are discussed by all those involved. To reach consensus on the wishes and needs of the whole of society is the essence of people's democracy. On matters that concern the people's interests, deliberations should be held with the people. Without deliberation or with insufficient deliberation, it is difficult to handle these matters well. We should always hold deliberations when we raise and address issues. The more numerous and in-depth, the better. On matters that have, be, that have a bearing on the interests of everyone, deliberations will be held extensively throughout the whole of society. On matters that concern the interests of people in one specific area, deliberations will be held locally. On matters that affect the interests of certain groups of people, deliberations will be held among those groups. And on matters that concern the interests of a community, deliberations will be held within the community. The process of holding extensive deliberations among the people is the process of promoting democracy and drawing on collective wisdom, the process of unifying people's thinking and building consensus, the process of scientific and democratic decision-making, and the process of ensuring the position of the people as masters of the country. 
It is only in this way that we can have solid foundations for our country's governance and for social governance. It is only in this way that we are able to draw together strength. In both ancient and modern times, in China and abroad, experience has shown that to guarantee and support the people's position as masters of the country, it is paramount that their lawfully elected representatives participate in the management of state affairs and social activities, and it is equally important that they participate in such activities through systems and methods that go farther than simple election. If the people merely have the right to vote, but no right of extensive participation, in other words, if they are awakened only at election time, but go into hibernation afterwards, this is token democracy. Reviewing our experience with people's democracy since the founding of the PRC, we have made it clear that in such a vast and populous socialist country, Extensive deliberation under the leadership of the CPC on major issues affecting the economy and the people's quality of life embodies the unity of democracy and centralism. Chinese socialist democracy takes two important forms. In one, the people exercise their right to vote in elections, and in the other, people from all sectors of society undertake extensive deliberations before major decisions are made. In China, these two forms do not cancel one another out, nor are they contradictory. They are complementary. They constitute institutional features and strengths of Chinese socialist democracy. Consultative democracy is a unique form of Chinese socialist democracy. It springs from our nation's long-established, inclusive, political culture, including such notions that all under heaven belongs to the people, mutual learning and inclusiveness, and seeking common ground while putting aside differences. It springs from China's political evolution in modern times, from the long-term practical experience as the CPC led the people through the course of revolution, development, and reform, from the great innovations made in our political institutions after the founding of the PRC by all political parties, peoples, organizations, ethnic groups, and people from all social strata and different backgrounds, and from the continuous innovations in China's political system since the adoption of reform and opening up. It has firm, cultural, theoretical, practical, and institutional foundations. Consultative democracy has been integrated into the whole process of Chinese socialist democracy. Chinese socialist consultative democracy not only upholds the leadership of the CPC, but also gives expression to the positive roles of all participants. It not only upholds the people's principal position in the country, but also implements the leadership system and organizational principle of democratic centralism. It not only adheres to the principle of people's democracy, but also promotes unity and harmony. So China's socialist consultative democracy diversifies the forms and widens the channels of democracy and gives it new meaning. We need to thoroughly understand the fundamental nature of socialist consultative democracy as an important manifestation of the party's mass line in the political sphere. The CPC comes from the people and serves the people. This makes it essential that the PRC, which was established by the people under the leadership of the CPC, should rely on the people in governing the country and managing society. The CPC carries out its mass line in its work, that is to say, it stays committed to doing everything for the people and relying on them. Following the principle of from the people to the people, and translating its sound proposals into people's conscious actions. 
The Constitution of the People's Republic of China stipulates that all power of the state belongs to the people, and all state organs and public servants must rely on their support, keep in close contact with them, listen to their opinions and suggestions, accept their scrutiny, and work hard to serve them. Both the CPC and state organs must follow the mass line and rely heavily on the people in their exercise of state power. Decrees may be followed if they are in accordance with the aspirations of the people. They may be ineffective if they are against the aspirations of the people. Footnote 5. Guanza. End of footnote 5. The future of a political party or government ultimately rests on public support. The development course of the CPC and the PRC reveals that the reason that we have made progress in our cause is that we have always maintained close ties with the people and represented the fundamental interests of the greatest possible majority of the people. However, if we become detached from the people and lose their support, that cause will fail. We must put the people's interests first. Under no circumstances can we ever alter our standpoint of breathing the same air as the people and sharing a common future with them, nor can we forget our purpose, which is to serve the people wholeheartedly, nor can we discard the view of historical materialism that the people are the real heroes. Serving the people wholeheartedly and always representing the fundamental interests of the greatest possible majority of the people are the important preconditions and foundation for the implementation and development of consultative democracy. It is stipulated in the Constitution of the CPC that the party has no special interests of its own apart from the interests of the working class and the greatest possible majority of the people. The CPC and the state it leads represent the fundamental interests of the greatest possible majority of the people and all of their theories, lines, principles, policies, and work plans should come from the people and should be formulated and implemented in the best interests of the people. With this as our basic political premise, we have the obligation and ability to listen extensively to comments and suggestions from all sectors of society. By extensively listening to suggestions and recommendations and accepting criticism and scrutiny through various forms of consultation, we will, under the CPC's unified leadership, be able to reach the broadest possible consensus on all decisions we make and on all our work, and in doing so ensure that factional strife and bitter disagreement between parties and between interest groups can be avoided. We will be able to have all demands heard on matters affecting the interests of all sides before decisions are made so that political forces do not remain fixed in their own opinions or reject others with different views for the sake of their own interests. We will be able to put in place broad-based mechanisms for identifying and correcting errors so that decisions are not made unless there is a clear understanding of the circumstances, nor are they made on the basis of a belief in one's own infallibility. We will be able to form mechanisms for ensuring people's participation in administration and governance at all levels in order to guarantee that the people will be able to voice their opinions and will find it easy to take an active part in the country's political activities and social governance. We will also be able to pool the wisdom and strength of the whole of society to advance reform and development, effectively overcoming any problems with our decisions and ensuring that essential work is not impeded by lack of consensus. This is where the unique strength of our socialist, consultative democracy lies. Democracy is not an ornament to be used for decoration. 
It is to be used to solve the problems that the people want to solve in all the activities of the party as it exercises state power and in all of the PRC's activities related to governance. We need to respect the people's principal position in the country and respect their creativity. We need to look to them as our teachers and ensure that increased political wisdom and stronger governance capability are deeply rooted in the people's innovative practice. We need to incorporate constructive advice and opinions from all sides of society into the governance of the country. Heaven sees as the people see. Heaven hears as the people hear. Footnote 6. Book of History. Shang Shu. End of footnote 6. The realization, protection, and development of the fundamental interests of the greatest possible majority of the people should be taken as the end goal of all work. And in carrying out major tasks and making major decisions, we must always take into account the reality of the people and their opinions and general public sentiment. We must Put the people's interests first. Bear in mind their expectations. Pay heed to their aspirations. Work to genuinely reflect their wishes and show true concern for their difficulties. We need to be more community-focused in our work. Regularly visit communities and stay close to the people so that we can become empathetic to their actual conditions, ease their concerns, address their discontent, and enable them to feel that we do care about them. We must do more for the people and offer them practical benefits so as to spark their enthusiasm, initiative, and creativity. We need to work hard to ensure the broad-based, multi-level, and institutionalized development of consultative democracy. Looking forward, we must adhere to the principle of democratic centralism, encourage the free airing of views, gather advice from all sides, and get every member of society to think and work for a common cause. This will allow us to achieve success in all our social programs, consolidate the political situation of stability and unity, and harmonize the relations between political parties, between ethnic groups, between religions, between social strata, and between our compatriots at home and overseas. This is what is meant by the words, if you use the eyes of all those under heaven to see, there is nothing you cannot see. If you use the ears of all those under heaven to hear, there is nothing you cannot hear. If you use the minds of all those under heaven to think, there is nothing you cannot understand. Footnote 7. Guanzhou. End of footnote 7. Socialist consultative democracy is not a matter of doing things for the sake of appearances. It must be carried out in a down-to-earth manner. And it must be put into practice in all respects rather than just in a particular respect and across the country at all levels, rather than just at a certain level. Therefore, we must establish a system of socialist consultative democracy that has rational procedures and is all-inclusive, so as to ensure that it is carried out on the basis of proper institutions, rules, regulations, and procedures. When we talk about consultation, we mean real consultation. Real consultation requires consultation both before and during the process of decision making. It requires that decisions are made and actions are modified on the basis of opinions and suggestions from all sectors. It also requires that institutions are in place to ensure that the results of consultations are implemented so that our decisions and work better reflect public will, and are better adapted to real-life conditions. We need to take advantage of every mechanism, every channel, and every method 
to conduct extensive consultations on the major issues of reform, development, and stability, and especially on the issues that have a bearing on people's immediate interests. We need to respect the wishes of the majority of the people, and at the same time take into account the reasonable demands of those who are in the minority. We should extensively solicit opinions and pool wisdom from society, expand consensus, and bolster integrated strength. We need to expand the consultative channels for the CPC, People's Congresses, People's Governments, and the CPPCC, other political parties, people's organizations, community organizations, enterprises, public institutions, social organizations, and think tanks. We need to conduct far-reaching consultation on political affairs, lawmaking, government administration, democracy, social issues, and community-level issues, and we need to improve consultation through proposals, conferences, informal discussions, seminars, hearings, public notices, assessments, the internet, and other means. Through this, we can make our consultative democracy more scientific and effective. The key element of socialist consultative democracy lies with the people. A great number of decisions and work affecting people's interests happen mainly at the community level. In line with the principle of consultation among the people and for the people, we need to redouble our efforts in developing consultative democracy at the community level, with a focus on conducting consultations among community members. All decisions that affect people's immediate interests must be made on the basis of soliciting the people's opinions, as well as consultations conducted with them through various means, on different levels, and from different sectors. We should improve the system by which community-level organizations maintain contact with the people, st strengthen consultation on community affairs, do a sound job of two-way communication of information from the top down and the bottom up, and make sure the people manage their own affairs well, in accordance with the law. We must make the exercise of power more open and standardized, and increase transparency in the operations of the party, the government, and the judiciary, as well as in the administration of other areas. We must ensure that the people oversee the exercise of power, and that power is exercised in ways that are open to scrutiny.